to the eternally curious, unapologetically superstitious Midnight Society rejects, Stormy Willow welcomes you. We are the eccentric coots, storytellers, explorers, dabblers, practitioners, and paranormal pupils who examine the what's ifs, the what's that's, and WTFs of this dimension and beyond. Welcome, listeners, to the Stormy Willow Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah, along with my beautiful, talented sister, Adele. And we welcome you to our podcast where we discuss all things paranormal, creepy, things that make you go, hmm. (laughs) Well, Adele, how are you? I know you're a little frustrated right now as we had um, some technical difficulties. So Adele's calming down over there. (laughs) I I really hope this episode doesn't sound horrible, but... uh... I don't know. It's the never ending problem with my drivers updating automatically and then suddenly not wanting to cooperate with my microphone. Uh, Yeah. I mean, nothing can ever be easy, right? (laughs) Even when you're not in retrograde. There's actually uh, this funny TikTok I'll have to share with you. And it's this guy that made a song about everything being so goddamn difficult. (laughs) Oh, it's so true, though. Everything, I feel like, is more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> like, that's just, like, like where I'm preparing, like, getting my stuff ready for tax season. And it's, like, just printing, like, the things I need or knowing what form I need, like, for my health savings account has been so difficult. Like, it took me 45 minutes to figure out where I needed to go on a website to print out the form I needed <laughs> oh, that I didn't even know I needed. So, it's, yeah, I know. It's such a headache. I, I always hate the first of the year because it's tax time and yeah. like, wow, my taxes are going to be so complicated this year because we moved from a different state, but I worked part of the year from Illinois here in New Mexico. And then I got a new job where I was, you know, based in New Mexico. And then we also bought a house. Like, yeah, it's, it's not going to be an easy return. But yeah. hey, don't worry, nothing's easy, so it's fine. <laughs> right, right. Why would it be easy? Exactly. Why would it be easy? So how has your week been? Like, how? what's going on other than, you know, first of the year stuff? Um, it's been busy. We, uh, well, I'm super excited because we got a brand new shower head today. So oh. it has like all these different settings. So I'm at least we have a shower. That's pretty nice. I don't I have know, a shower at my house. We have two. <laughs> I took the old shower head and put it on the guest bathroom. So now that one has a better shower head. Too. Nice. Look at well, you. I guess next time you're out here, you can take showers as much yes. as possible. We always look forward to that because we just have the tub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So today was really interesting for us because, you know, so today's kind of a sad day for us because it marks two months from losing our Shelby girl. So if you haven't been following the podcast, um, our dog Shelby passed away two months ago. And so we thought, you know, we'll take Herman to the animal shelter. Like we saw this really sweet dog and on um, call and we're like, oh, she's so sweet. She's so docile. So we're like, well, let's, you know, go do a meet and greet and just see how Herman does. And if you don't, follow Herman, then, you know, he, he's a little bit like Beetlejuice. Like he just does not play well with others typically, but usually with female dogs, he does okay. You know, so we do this meet and greet and this poor dog tried to jump out the window of the animal shelter to get away from us. And then he got in a fight with another dog they tried to pair him with. So um, Herman let us know that he is a okay being an only child. And and that's, you know, what we're going to do. Yeah, that's, I guess it's good he showed out right off. It yeah, I mean, it's like, good he, like, made it known, like, no, like, absolutely not. Like, we are not doing this. <laughs> I've never had a dog try to literally jump, like, through a plant and try to head first into the window to get away from us. So, that, that was the first. Pretty insane. 
<laughs> so we drove like over an hour and a half to this animal shelter and just came on back <laughs> with our little our little Herman. <laughs> Well, but let me tell you though, we've had some weird paranormal activity, no, 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 whatever I'm trying to say, paranormal activity happening around the house. And so if you didn't catch our episode last week on an Ackroyd, Adele caught a crazy orb um, right behind my head and we posted that on our social and it was pretty intense. And so this week, a lamp on my nightstand flew across the nightstand. No one was in there. Nothing made. It just literally went. Shoop. And then we had a candle do the same thing. And like Stephen picked it up and put it on like the candle holder and it fell right. It just went shoop, and fell right back over with like no disturbance. Nobody walking in the room, shaking anything. And then like we heard some heavy breathing too. Oh, that's weird. But it sounded almost like a Shelby heavy breathe. Like she used to do. Yeah, it was so we had some weird stuff this week. I don't know what it's about. Again, like not threatening or scary energy, but just some some activity. What do you think? Have you tried doing any experiments? I need to. I think I need to do get out the EMF. Yeah, too bad. Like I have a spirit at my spirit box. I know you have all the equipment, so maybe we could um maybe we could Facetime and do it or something. You think you can pump it over the? We could try it. Where's the shot? Yeah, so yeah. maybe that'll be an adventure we can do this week. Yeah, we that would be pretty cool. I'm it's noticing fun. Shelby has passed, but our energy has picked up a little more in the house. Maybe you know, maybe it just takes time to figure out. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, if you don't have a body anymore, like I mean, look how long it took Sam Wheat and Ghosts is all. The, I have. That's me. Like, <laughs> like really petty. <laughs> <laughs> that's true so i mean maybe it's just you know her energy just like, like again like it's a sweet spirit it's not it doesn't feel threatening or it's just kind of like hey I'm here <laughs> kind of situation yeah. and maybe that's why herman didn't want another dog he's like shelby's here like what are you talking about like, what are we doing <laughs> like I, I don't want two other dogs in the house <laughs> exactly you know i always think that animals can really sense what we can't so i feel like he's probably like eh no thanks she's here i'm good <laughs> yeah well um speaking of energy that's a good segue into my topic I'm oh really yes much. and i did yes all right i love it so today i want to talk about ley lines i know nothing about ley lines i don't really? even know what they are so i'm super excited good. um I, yeah you know it's not a super popular topic oddly enough and i actually didn't know that they were real or supposedly real um because my favorite book series, The Hollows by Kim Harrison, she talks about ley line energy and it's a, it's like an urban supernatural crime kind of series, which oh. is really good. So that's where all of the demons and witches draw their power from. Oh, it's like that, their power, like their power portal, if you will. They're, they call it tapping a line. So they can't do it over water. Tapping but a like, line. It's just like the, the energy of the earth and the ever after. And they're real, like, and so when you were reading these books, you just thought it was, like, I made thought it was something like, part of the made story. Up. Yeah, like, I've not ever heard of this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, do it. Tell us about it. Let's into it. So, ley lines are straight lines that connect important or sacred sites. So, some examples of these sites would be, like, the Great Pyramids of Giza, Machu Picchu, um, Chichen Itza, Stonehenge, even Sedona is supposedly a place and not like some of these bigger places like this are not only positioned where ley lines are, but also convergence of multiple ley lines. So the idea is if you have a few ley lines crossing, that's a really super powerful place. Um, so mystics believe that these are Earth's energy grids, and if you're a magic practitioner, you can tap into these energies. Oh, I guess that's why, like, I know Dad really, when he went to Sedona, like, it was, like, life-changing for him. So I guess because he was, like, tapping into and being so close to the source. Yeah. Uh, cause, I guess. Because the thing I've always heard about Sedona is they have vortexes. Yeah, like, what is that? And I guess some people who believe in ley lines think that maybe that energy makes the vortexes. Or, that would make sense. 
But first, how about a bit of history? I don't know. Uh, ley lines. So, yes, let's hear it. So I have really abbreviated this history because it goes back a lot and wanted to keep this topic pretty light. <laughs> so we're just <laughs> going to start. We're still recovering after uh, Skinwalker Ranch. Let's just be yeah, real. That, that was so intense. So 1846, and you'll notice that most of the people who are talking about ley lines and arguing are they true or not are mostly like the scientific community and archaeologists oh, cool. in England. So most of okay. these people are British. Got it. And, uh, talking specifically about England. So in 1846, Reverend Edward Duke noticed that some monuments and churches seem to align. So while this wasn't ley lines yet, he made that observation that, hmm, that's kind of curious that a lot of these sites are kind of in a straight line when you look at them. And then in 1909, the idea grew even more in Germany. Um, and Wilhelm Dutt expanded the idea um, to the lines having religious and astronomical functions. So he's kind of taking it a bit beyond them just being straight lines. But oh, right. yeah. And you mean like straight, like physical lines? Like I could, they're yeah. like in a line. Yeah. So th this is really who coined the term ley lines is Alfred Watkins in 1921. Oh, right. So he was a landscape photographer. And he noticed just looking across a lot of these landscapes as he was doing his photography that it's just a straight line. Um, while he didn't think that these were supernatural, he actually really wanted to get into archaeology. That was really what he wanted to kind of yeah. crack into. So he thought that these could be navigation points used by our ancestors of, okay, if I'm trying to get to the next major town, these are more like landmarks to get me there as I'm going in a straight line and the shortest distance between two places is a straight line. Right. Kind of his thinking. So he was trying to bring more of like an archaeological perspective of, okay, this just makes sense for routes, like trade routes. Yeah. Um, but the idea was very criticized and rejected by historians and archaeologists. So some of the criticisms were, well, the lines aren't practical for traveling straight over certain terrain. So let's say you have like a mountainous or, you know, hilly kind of terrain. Right. Maybe a straight line doesn't make the most sense. So why would they do that? Now to a <laughs> counterpoint, to me, that could be a counter argument of, yeah, exactly. Why did they do that? <laughs> if it's not easy, why do these line up even over different Right. Terrains? That's true. Um, and they're, they're saying that some of these sites and features were constructed at completely different time periods. That's so if they right. were doing it logically, then, okay, the pyramids were there, but then it's, you know, also connecting maybe like a church in London. <laughs> it was more. Yeah, reasonable. that doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And also the ambiguity of what is considered a significant site or feature. Right. So they're saying that like you could draw a random line on a map and you're likely to connect some sort of land feature or historic site in a straight line. And um, actually some smart asses I kind of love um, did, did this kind of experiment in London where they just drew a straight line. They're like, look, I connected eight pizza restaurants <laughs> on this map. <laughs> is it magic? <laughs> well, it depends on how delicious the pizza is. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's something um, about the sauce. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can see the criticism here. It's just like, you know, is it a coincidence or not? Right, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say not. Yeah, so. I'm on that. I'm on that team. On there, that was, there was some enthusiasm uh, that started, you know, from this theory, but it kind of lost its momentum after Watkins died in 1935. And then we had World War II. <laughs> so people yeah. were like, mm, I'm kind I of focused. I put this on the back burner. <laughs> yeah, so it pretty much fizzled out and became kind of like a, a forgotten theory. Yeah, the and I'm thinking like, you said like it kind of started in the t um, around the 20s, right? So that was um, when, you know, uh, spiritualism was really taken off, like the Fox sisters and things exactly. of that. Exactly. So well. a lot of people into that spiritualism, as well as like numerology, were kind of into this. Um, <laughs> sorry, let me let the cat out. 
<laughs> Lou. Oh, so, so waiting music. She's scratching at the door. Get here, Lou. Get here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, watch out, Pearl. She had to hiss at the doggy. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. So, so yeah, you can kind of see clearly the types of people that would probably be into this at that time. Yeah, me. 100% yeah. me. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Um, so then in the 1960s, Tony Webb, uh, reviewed and altered the notion of ley lines. So he's really what popularized, I think, of what we know as ley lines today. Um, so he wrote a book in 1961 called Skyways and Landmarks. And mm -hmm. he, in, in this book, says that the lines were created to guide spacecraft. So he's kind of like one of the founders of that original idea of gotcha. being like extraterrestrial right as, so, we, as we said paranormal magic extraterrestrials it's all the same it's all connected so yeah, yeah. so then in 1961 the american society of dowler i'm sorry dowsers was founded so that sounds fancy dowsing i think a lot of us know what dowsing rods are. Like the I was about to say, that's the, but you want to give a, um. Yeah. So they're like these rods where supposedly you can pick up energies yeah. and you have two rods that they cross or move apart. That's how you're picking up on these energies. Adele has them. We took them on the ghost walk. <laughs> yeah. We found nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, so bombed. <laughs> but one oh, thing. Remember, I, we did where that little boy was supposedly, um. Yeah, we were getting some weird EMF readings. Yeah, did we? We didn't get anything with the dowsing rods, though, did we? I thought we did with the little boy. Maybe we did. I don't that's remember. Not, yeah, I think that's the only activity we really got, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. There was not a lot of activity that night. It was just cold. It was really <laughs> oh, cold. there were a lot of street cats. Well, there were, and there were actually we did see two ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I'd gotten a picture. <laughs> <laughs> these so we're like on a private ghost tour and there are like you they just tell us like this really spooky story we're walking and there are these two girls that dress up like in a sheet <laughs> a sheet with like glasses with sunglasses oh. <laughs> and they come out just like just being kind of funny but it was hilarious it was so really we're, just, we're like we have technically seen two that ghost. I yeah, mean, <laughs> it was really funny. Full body apparitions. Yeah, we did. It was great. I kind of want to do that. Um, I really do. It was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Fun stuff. Um, I'm but sorry, back, I have to digress. Nah, it's fine. Back to ley lines. This isn't a very long topic, actually. There's not much to it. Um, so that also just to show how the momentum is building again in the 60s, in 1961, the American Society of dowsers was founded yeah one thing i didn't know about dowsing though is actually i think originally before it became paranormal or i don't know if it's like one and the same but it, you can actually do it to find groundwater and like metals oh. and other objects um, i guess that would make sense underground yeah so they think that like supernatural slash earth energy guides you to these things <clears throat> interesting yeah so some people are into it yeah, I dig it. It's kind of a cool way to treasure hunt, I guess. I know, I was about to say, that's like the original, uh, what are those things called that you see? Uh, like metal detectors? Yeah. <laughs> you got there with your rods. Housing. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, like you can find, yeah, exactly, it's like, I'm looking for energy, or, you know, if I find a coin or a ring, that's cool too. <laughs> yeah. So win-win. <laughs> so, in 1967, author John Michel uh, promoted this idea to a wider audience, um, as well as ancient astronaut theory, uh, via exactly. his book, The Flying Saucer Vision, oh. and 1969 book, uh, The View Over Atlantis. So ancient astronaut theory, if you ever watch Ancient Aliens, oh, yeah, that, yeah. you know, the we've been contacted for millennia. Um, so as long as there's human civilization and history, there's been extraterrestrials visiting us and kind of giving us a helping hand um but they you know they they've been here they are here <laughs> yeah kind of that theory um 
But also, John Michelle, this is where I think you start getting the con the idea that these lines aren't just roads or maps. He brought in the idea um, from the Chinese Lung Mei, which means dragon paths, that these mm -hmm. lines have energy. Okay. So, and he also, in his books, announced the coming of the Age of Aquarius. Um, like, this is the dawn yeah, and I hate the that song. Aquarius. <laughs> yes. um, so, the Age of Aquarius is supposed to be a new era of expanded human consciousness. Um, oh, you're not to, there. I, I'm really concerned. Yeah, it is still coming. Some people say it's here. Some people say we're still waiting on it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Adele made me watch this movie. Um, what was it called? Don't Look Up. Oh, did you watch it? And it has really messed with me, Adele. Like, it has messed with my head big time. I, I felt catharsis because through it. I feel like if I would have watched this show or movie, like, maybe five, ten years ago, I bet that would never happen. But, like, watching it now, I'm like, this is exactly what is happening. <laughs> like, well, there's warming and, and, and just the way that people act. And, like, there's just so, like, it's like humans are just, for the most part, so weird now, like, with their phones and with everything. It's just, like, um, I don't know. It's just so weird. And it, I just, it really messed with me. Um, yeah, just people. It's a great me. movie, but it does stick with you, like. Yeah, it's, weird. it's crazy. What what really and in case you don't know what we're talking about, um, it's the Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence movie on Netflix. Netflix, we highly recommend. It's called Don't Look it's Up. It's great, but it, it it messed with me. But it's it's essentially about like a comet heading towards the Earth and people's reactions to it on if they believe it or not, and kind of like this whole COVID crisis and global warming, it, it parallels like a lot of the things you see in society right, right now. And just like with the government and uh, Meryl Streep does a great job. Oh God. Oh, and uh, freaking, what's his name? Jonah Hill. Yes. Oh, Jonah Hill pretty much oh. plays like Don Jr. A hundred percent. And it's just, and he's hilarious. And, like, like they don't listen, like spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, but like, they don't listen to like these top scientists that have been studying this, and they basically go with somebody that's like funding their campaign and you can just imagine how it's a trick billionaire like uh, yeah so yeah i was what i we started we watched that movie after we had been binging on um while the rest of us die that is a series on Ooh. vice channel and oh, it is yeah. literally all about all the different scenarios of something horrible happening like with society or a plague or just things breaking down and how the government is only going to cover their asses. That's why, like, with Hurricane Katrina, they even featured that. They were like, FEMA didn't care about the common people. Anytime something like this, emergency-wise, to that level, all they're doing is making sure the government is set up for if the president gets killed. They are not focused on you. They don't care about you. And it's just all of these elite people taking care of themselves. So don't think that they are going to come to your rescue at all <laughs> so all that play out unfortunately time yeah. and time again so yeah so i was watching that and then we watched that movie and I was oh like, i'm was surprised you didn't like go and like decide to like build a bunker or something <laughs> i was just like no I'll, i would just rather be taken out because guess what if if you survive you're with all those assholes who are ruining the planet so anyway right. let me go off my soapbox i'm so sorry guys but i i <laughs> meant to tell you that last week that i did i did do my homework and watch that movie and i mean and it's a good one like i definitely recommend you guys watch yeah. it but it, i'm interested to, like if you watch it like uh, put something on social let me know if it messed with you like it did me because it's just it's so crazy that it's unbelievable, but it's like, yeah, this is like now, like, but this does, I'm like, just even how like the pop stars act and how people act, yeah, and, like, it's like that's so what our society it. truly is, though. Like, and it's just, it, I don't know, it, it's a powerful piece. I yeah, think. I've heard um, it's been very divisive that there's nobody in the middle. People either really like it or they really hate it. Yeah, I thought it was good, and I thought it was, but I thought it was scary because it's. So, like, it's so far fetched, but it's so. It, so it made me feel better. Like, I feel so much like Jennifer Lawrence, and I felt like yeah. just watching her blow up <laughs> and yeah. scream about it. Like, I was like, 
oh, that felt good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because there are so many wonderful scientists and people out there that have been telling us about climate change for God knows how long. And we just keep on keeping on. And like you said, we're going to end up being yeah. the people. We are going to. We're going to pay the price for sure. So. Well, actually, anyway, I'm sorry. Kind of, no, actually, this kind of ties back to ley lines and ancient astronaut theory. So Project Pegasus, which maybe I'll cover once I read oh, the from Skinwalker that would, Ranch. But, uh, that would be a good one. Em on, and that's why we drink, did a fantastic two-parter on that topic. If yes. you want to know more about it, um, head over to their show. I remember that. Um, yeah, you guys, if you haven't listened to That's Why We Drink, I think it's one of mine and Adele's favorite podcasts, so definitely check um, them out. They're great. They do a really good job covering all, if you like this kind of stuff, then you'll, you'll dig it. Yeah, for sure. But um, I just remember Project Pegasus, the um, prediction is that Trump will be president twice, and while he didn't get reelected this time, I think he could. But what's interesting is that if that does happen, according to this um, theory, is then extraterrestrials make contact. And I think it was supposed to be around the year like 2024-ish. Great. But, like, Something that, else to look forward to. You. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds pretty accurate, though, for the timing of when he would get reelected if he runs right. this next one. And I'm like, but also what I've heard on the other podcasts um, evidence of the afterlife from a lot of the mediums and astrologers is they're saying that um, we are moving into this new era with, with that greater consciousness, kind of like the age of Aquarius. And that a lot of them do think that extraterrestrials are about to make contact. So I think it's really weird looking across these different sources and different people and different theories. And it all seems to be converging saying that, Hey, we're going to have some sort of intervention because of how shitty we've been treating our planet and each other. Right. So well, so when they say like making contact, but extraterrestrials making contact, do they mean like taking over and like hurting us or just kind of being like I think like showing us a way is what it sounds like to me. And with Project Pegasus, they they are supposed to bring technology and help our society be more um I guess environmentally friendly, but also like conscious of each other. Like just I being wonder, more harmonious. I wonder if, like, you know, they called that era in the 60s, the age of Aquarius, as we were talking about. Like, I wonder if this new age has a name. Because, yes, yeah, um, evidence of the afterlife. I know Adele and I really, like, that's another just amazing podcast. Um, but you're right. Like, a lot of the psychics, medium scientists, just different, very educated people, um, have the same theory that we are entering into a different realm of consciousness, as you say. And I, and I, I, I mean, but at the same time, it's like something has, like, well, how much more, you know, until we get there? That's a scary yeah. thing. So, um, it'll be interesting. But yeah, I'm definitely, I'm going to go back, um, this weekend and listen to M's, um, F2 Carter on that because it's been a while since I've listened to it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just interesting with, uh, these ley lines. Age of Aquarius and then these other things. Right. Like it all, you know, that's just, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> it's so connected. Very interesting. Very <laughs> interesting. scratch your head a little bit. Yeah. But, but back to specifically the ley lines, which <laughs> is, might tie into all of this. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut it down. Go ahead. Take it. No, 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 it's fine. Like I said, it's not a very long topic, so it's fine. It's um, like, I'm going to take this topic and make it like three hours. <laughs> You're like, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> so, John Michel, uh, his books kind of started laying the groundwork for what is called modern Earth mysteries movement. I love it. Um, so that's more of like this ancient astronaut theory and, and things like that. Um, and in 1962, Lay Hunters Club was established. So that's Ooh, I like cool. that. Um, 1970s through the 80s, way more publications on the topic. So you're just getting a lot of momentum and more publications related to Ley Lines. And what was really intriguing about lay hunting was it's kind of an amateur thing, almost like numerology. So a lot of those folks were getting into it because you really don't need any training. You don't need like a formal education on it. You can just go look for your own lay lines. Wow. Um, so among like the lay hunter community, they generally agree that the ley lines were laid out between 5000 BC and 
2600 BC. I don't know how they arrived at that, but <laughs> that's the general agreement of when they think these things were created. Okay, so they've been around a while. <laughs> yeah, um, but there is disagreement on the energy itself. Um, some think that uh, the lays mark pre-existing energy, so maybe it's like not there anymore, and others believe that the lays help the flow of the energy like gotcha. across the planet. Um, and this is pretty cool. There was um, the Dragon Project that took place in London in 1977 through the 80s. So Paul Devereaux, he was the current editor at that time of Lay Hunter magazine and was a founding member of this project. So he was trying to bring more science to this. So he was seeking evidence of ley line energy. Wow. So he conducted radioactivity and ultrasonic tests at prehistoric sites. So I don't know if it's good or bad. Some sites actually did have high readings while others didn't. So you can't really connect a pretty bit. So yeah, it's, it's like, while you, you can't say all ley line sites or convergent sites, have energy, it's still odd that some of them did have unusual readings. Unless they, like, just through the years, things have gotten in the way, like, you know, like, rebuilt over, like, maybe at one point it did have that energy, but, like, maybe that building has changed over to something else. And so, you know what, possibly, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. well, it. okay, and taking it back to the hollows, um, which is fiction, but in the book, if you're, I don't want to give, like, too much of the stuff away, it, it seems that if you are powerful enough, <laughs> you could maybe make your own lines. You can make mm -hmm. a new line. So I don't know. Maybe yeah, maybe these lines can. can be old lines that are weak, and the new, stronger lines can be made. That's true. If if you believe that there's energy there at all, right? Um, but yeah, then it's kind of a repeat of what happened in the 1920s and 30s. So interest in ley lines fizzled out in the 90s. But it's not so much that it just fizzled out, it almost like shifted. So enthusiasts shifted more to archaeo astronomy. Um, so that's the investigation of the astronomical knowledge of prehistoric cultures. So I think that's more tying it back into archaeology and astronomy. And right. you know, it's just kind of evolved. Um, but today, some esoteric groups like the Druids and pagans, it's still a pretty strong belief. Um, for some of their rituals and practices. Right. And then, as I mentioned, in pop culture, um, The Hollows includes ley lines, as well as The Dresden Files by Jim Butcher, which is another um, fiction series. Okay. So, that's all I have on ley lines. Um, that's pretty interesting, though. I've never, I'm not familiar, I, I'm not familiar, so. Yeah, I just, I just thought it was cool. Um finding out that it's actually like a real belief or theme. Right. Yeah. But it's really interesting the back and forth between like spiritualism in the 20s and 30s and archaeology blatantly disregarding this and then later on archaeologists kind of coming back to it. Right. And I'm making a full circle. Being a little, I wouldn't say they accept it, but like they're open more to looking into it. Right, yeah. <laughs> and now it's all kind of morphed into this ancient astronaut theory. Right. It's pretty interesting, though. Like, so if you wanted to, like, find a local ley line, could you, I mean, is that something that you could just, like, Google? About I mean, yeah. I, I mean, so see. apparently there are some known ley lines, like I said, Sedona and right. in the U.S. It sounds like around the Great Lakes, there are also quite a few. Um, but you can also just go hunt for your own. I, I guess just go out in the yard with some dowsing rods. Right. Yeah, there's like, I just Googled it and they have it like um, on like Google Earth. You can look and see like different ley lines. Yeah, and some of the, it's kind of interesting too because if you Not a lot in the ley lines, in like some, <laughs> what's that? Not a lot in the South, the case you're wondering, <laughs> according to this map. <laughs> yeah, um, I had no comment there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like some of the different maps you see are widely different. Like some look more almost right. like a longitude, latitude kind of grid, and others just look like random lines all over yeah. the place. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting. I just kind of wanted to see, like, because this one is insane. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I highly recommend just Google a Google image ley line. Yeah. Get all sorts of different takes on it. That's pretty cool. I really love it. Yeah, I just like how it all kind of tight. I mean, I minored in anthropology, archaeology, so I'm yeah, always a sucker for those kinds of topics. <laughs> so then you're mixing in like astrology and astronomy in there. Hell it's yeah, crazy. I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like mind blown. <laughs> but it's so fascinating. It really is. Like, and I think, you know, as, um, you know, Adele and I love these topics so much. And it's something that we are talking about. I mean, ever since we were little. And I just think it's really cool because the one thing I always come back to is there's so much more than we even realize. And it's just so hard to comprehend it all, really. It's really pretty magnificent. Yeah. And who knows, maybe ley lines will resurface again. Yeah. Well, I need, um, I think we could all use some energy, some good energy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, For apparently, sure. well, I think it's more in the Dresden Files, which is fiction, but in the Dresden Files, um, you can have ley lines that have positive energy or negative energy. Like, there might be some places that are kind of bad. Like Skinwalker Ranch? Perhaps, yeah. Like, that's what comes to mind. Like, I, that's I think like... it's an island called, like, Demon's Reach in the Great Lakes, Walker... like, the middle of Lake Michigan or something. Sounds like Skinwalker Ranch. Maybe there's right? just yeah, the bad, the bad ley lines. I want to get to the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the happy places. Let's go to like Cloud Cuckoo Land. That, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go there. That might be a little too much. Let, yeah. Let, <laughs> I'll just stay in Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll go to Sedona. <laughs> we'll venture <Okay>. there. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for the information. That was really neat. Like I had never heard of these, so I'm really glad to learn something new. Yeah, I think it's cool because, you know, like I said, it's not a very popular topic. No. But I think it's really cool. And I just love the era of when it originated with, like, that whole numerology and spiritualism time. It's, yeah, I think it was a really cool time for sure. People were really, uh, I want to say, like, they were really trying to, ex you could really tell they were trying to expand yeah. their mind and their thought process. and. I, I don't really feel very connected to any time in history except for maybe the 1920s with all the spiritualism yeah. stuff. Well, we always joke, and I, I can't wait till Adele does a past life regression because I always connect with like the 60s and that sort of time. And we always say that Adele doesn't connect with any time because she's from the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to laugh if they're like, oh. Well, you're a brand new soul. <laughs> First time you've ever been here. <laughs> I'll be like, it's super <laughs> short reading. I'll be like, uh, like can I get some of my money back? Can I get some of my like, money back or talk to somebody dead? <laughs> and they'll just like tell you everything that you already know that happened and you're like, like, we can go back to 1987. <laughs> hey, and that that's isn't that when Marty's trying to get back to? There you go. <laughs> the 80s were awesome. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I I I think I Resemble a little bit Michael J. Fox. You do. Especially when I dress up like Marty McFly. Marty maybe, McFly. Maybe I am Marty McFly. Maybe you are. <laughs> yeah, we are pretty obsessed with Back to the Future. <laughs> we just had a little matching sunglasses. It's a pretty good one. I think from Pizza Hut. So they did that whole Back to the Future promo with the Back to the Future sunglasses that we totally rocked. <laughs> we were all about it. Didn't get a DeLorean though, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, one day. Oh, uh, I still my gremlin. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool. Well, thank you for this awesome topic. And if you guys know anything about ley lines or any topics that you're interested in and you want us to research, um, find us on our website. You want to give them the link, Adele? Yeah, it's stormywillow.com. Awesome. We're on Instagram. We might pop on Twitter down the road, but we're not there yet. Yeah. All the ways to listen and contact us are at stormywillow.com. You can also contact our Gmail, stormywillowpodcast at gmail.com. And we'd love right. to hear your stories. Or, yeah, uh, we would. We'd just love to hear your comments or stories or topics you um, want to hear more about, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something new and um, something to kind of um, add to your, to your knowledge bank. <laughs> 
yeah. and check out. And so thank you for taking your time and listening to us. We enjoy sharing these uh, these conversations with you all. Yeah, and as always, stay safe and stay curious. Yes. Bye, you guys. Bye.